That's right, The Empty Man. What's up, guys? Welcome to the mashup. I'm Justin, and today I'm reviewing the movie The Empty Man. From Toy Century Studios, The Empty Man follows an ex cop on the trail of a missing girl who comes across a secretive group attempting to summon a terrifying supernatural entity. So, who or what exactly is The Empty Man? The Empty Man is based off of a Tibetan tulpa. A tulpa is a concept of mysticism and the paranormal of a being or object which is created through a spiritual or mental powers. Designed to appear as an autonomous sentient entity to the person or people who create it into existence, well-developed tulpas are often able to appear to their hosts as separate conscious entities living within their brains capable of independent thoughts, actions, memories, and feelings. It is said that tulpas act on the same mechanisms that allow hosts to experience subjective consciousness. Tulpas can be likened to imaginary friends that are capable of independent thought. The difference between a tulpa and an imaginary friend, though, is that the way in which the host experiences no sense of ownership over the thoughts and the actions of the tulpa. More advanced tulpas can manifest as mind voices in the head of the host, or even vivid hallucinations that can affect one or more of the host's senses. So how exactly do you summon the empty man? To summon the empty man, you take an empty bottle, think of him or imagine him, and then blow into the opening of the bottle to make an almost call-like noise to him. After you call out to him, over the next three days, you will hear him, see him, and then eventually he will get you. So let's talk about the story and the runtime of the movie. The movie's runtime is two hours and 17 minutes, and that's super long for a horror movie, I think. The movie begins with a group of friends who are climbing a mountain in Yura, Britain, Asia, and ultimately have a run-in with the Empty Man, all before we actually get the whole title card of the movie that leads us to the actual synopsis that I mentioned earlier of an ex-cop who actually follows a group of friends who have come in contact with the Empty Man. Now, honestly, I feel like this movie is really two movies in one, and I feel that had it actually gone that route and had like The Empty Man 1 and then The Empty Man 2, this movie might have been a little bit better. I actually was fine overall with the runtime, even though it really sounds long, it didn't feel that long. I know there were probably some parts of the movie that really kind of seemed drawn out, but overall, two hours and 17 minutes did not seem as bad. I think if they focus more on this movie with just the group of mountain hikers in the Bhutan, Asia, where we actually get to see the kind of skeleton-like version of the empty man in a cavern, I think if we just focused on that and more of the suspenseful horror-esque elements that this entity is going to cause these mountain hikers and how they're going to survive, I think that could have been a movie all in itself. And then you could have a tie-in that would lead into the second empty man movie. And that could have been a story that we're kind of used to as far as a teenage horror movie flick. Now, I will say this, that the trailer does not do this movie justice. If you watch it, it immediately comes off across as like an urban legend, which in some cases I can see how it can be that. But this is not like the Tibetan version of the Candyman. Uh, I know that's very similar. A lot of people have been saying that. But honestly, this is more of like a psychological horror movie thriller. And I think if they'd actually gone with more of the concept of what the empty man is in the trailer versus kind of, you know, trying to lure people in because it's like a teenage slasher flick kind of movie. I think it might've done a little bit better. So on that note, let's talk about the horror movie elements of the movie. So honestly, this movie has a mixed bag. It has a little bit of everything. It has suspense and jump scares because, you know, one of the characters falls down to a cat into a cavern where we actually get to see the skeleton of the empty man. And, you know, immediately you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to find something down there. And we're immediately thinking we're going to find something like from the descent or some type of like creature but no, we see the skeleton here. But obviously from that, we kind of also tie in now to like supernatural. So now we have like suspense, supernatural. And then later on, we get some gore as far as like some blood and some slash and killing. And then we also get the rest of the movie, which is basically a psychological horror. And that we have this cult or, you know, this group, the society group that is basically trying to summon this entity into their world. And as the movie kind of gets to the third act, it really starts to start messing with your brain and really having to make you think about what you just saw and if it's real or not. So it's a mixed bag of all those. And I actually think it works with the movie very well. It always leaves you guessing. So here's some things I actually liked from the movie. I like that the actual villain of the movie, the empty man, the actual concept and idea of him being the tulpa is actually a real world thing. That's what I think made the slasher movies very popular back in the day. You know, like Scream and stuff like that is like you should actually see yourself, you know, being someone who can get killed. And so I think with this particular movie, being that it is a Tibetan concept, I'm not going to call it urban legend, but more of like, you know, something that you could actually do. Uh, it's funny, I went to go see this movie with two friends from work, and one of the fr my friends was saying that he actually has thought about trying to manifest something into being. And I was like, whoa, whoa, don't be doing all that, you know. But it's kind of weird to think that this is an actual concept that people live by and really think about and really try to make put use into the real world. And so that's kind of scary and eerie. There were a couple scenes that I thought was really good use of the special effects. I will ding it real quick. I know this is a list of what I liked about the movie, but I will ding it real quick. 
there is a scene in the beginning when they're actually in the you know Tibetan mountains where you can clearly see it's very CG like. It's really just like one or two scenes, but I have to give it a ding for that. But in the opposite effect, there was a lot of good special effects used. Like for instance, they're using a map to basically get around, and the scene where it's like kind of goes into the map and then kind of cuts and turns into a forest. So if you look at the map and you have like the roads and routes and these little points on the map, they basically zoom into the map, and as they zoom in it turns into like a real road in a real forest, which I thought was really cool. Another thing that I liked about the movie that has similarities to Get Out and its run chase scene. So if you're not familiar with Get Out, one of the things that made the movie famous was a scene where the main character is looking out and this guy is coming at him, basically running. Like he's running at you and he's going and he's going and he's gonna get really close to you and then he darts off. So this movie does a lot about that with The Empty Man. You'll see it when you watch it, but you'll know that he basically mimics your step. So he goes he goes towards you, and then you step back, and then he goes towards you again, and then you step back. And as you kind of hurry up and take spins, then he starts bolting at you. And then he gets really, really close, and then he either gets you or he doesn't. And then finally, the thing I liked most was I liked the fact that it has the three-day concept of, you know, you hear him, you see him, and then he gets you. And that reminds me a lot of like, you know, from The Ring, when you watch the video and then seven days you'll die. Or I think like the movies It Follows where uh, they have the entity that's following them and they have to have, you know, you have to have sex with somebody to transfer it off to somebody else. But it's kind of that same concept of like, you know, you do something, you know, cause and effect and the effect is always like temporary amount of time before the entity will get you. I really like that concept. It always keeps you on your toes. So for those who do not know, and I honestly didn't until I did more research about this movie, this movie is actually based off of a graphic novel. Based on the 2015 Boom Studios graphic novel by Cullen Bunn, the original Empty Man is based on an empty man disease where no drug has been able to slow its progress. The cause is unknown, and the symptoms include fits of rage, hideous hallucinations, suicidal dementia, followed by death, or a near lifeless empty state of catatonia. As murder cults rise nationwide, the FBI and CDC enter a joint investigation of the Empty Man, hoping to piece together clues to stop the cult and uncover a cure. So should you watch The Empty Man? That's the big question here. And I honestly think if you have two hours and 17 minutes of time to kill, for sure we're in a pandemic and we always need something to watch. But if I was just going to say as far as horror movies go, I do recommend The Empty Man. And I think that it is a movie that if you can endure the runtime is an interesting story and it's something different that we haven't seen lately. I think, you know, especially given that we're in the Halloween season, we have a lot of the movies that we're rewatching. Like I rewatched all the Scream series and the Halloween, all that kind of stuff. That's those are my favorite movies to watch. But I really like these kind of like supernatural, psychological, you know, make you kind of think. Those movies really kind of get to you and they really like kind of leave you thinking, man, what did I just watch? So I know the runtime is, you know, probably the main thing that is a put off for this movie. But if you can get through that and really kind of appreciate some of the horror elements this movie is trying to give you, I think that you'll enjoy The Empty Man. So saying that, I'm going to give The Empty Man three out of five skulls. And the main reason I'm giving it three out of five, even though I really think it does have the potential to be a better horror movie, is the runtime. I really think this is two movies in one. I think if they just separated out and maybe had like the first one as the main movie and then have the second one as a sequel or maybe not have the first part at all and just have the, the second one, I think that we could have still had a, a decent horror movie to go with and then I may get a little bit more stars. It's not perfect at all by any means, so I don't think it would have ever earned five out of five, but I honestly think that it's deserved of a three out of five. If you have seen The Empty Man, let me know your thoughts below if you agree with my review, and if you haven't seen it yet, are you going to go see it? And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you want more videos like this one, Make sure you smash that subscribe notification bell. And I'll see you guys next time on The Mashup.